Welcome to video number two in this three-part series all about my property number 19, how I purchased it, renovated it, and then refinanced it to see if I can pull off a full BRRR strategy and release the initial funds that I used to purchase the property and then, of course, to renovate it as well. If you've not yet seen video number one in the series, make sure you go back and watch this one first where I actually purchased the property, did the rip out, and started the initial stages of the renovation. In this video you're about to watch, we go through the full process of where I turned the property around and actually get it let. And then in the third video, we will take a look at how much it's cost me and the numbers behind the deal. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things UK buy to let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. So if you're ready, let's jump in and get started. So here we are on the 16th of June and I've just put my order in for my kitchen. I got quotes from Howden's Magnet DIY Kitchens and from a local person that I've used before who actually helped me on my own residential property. Um, all of the quotes came in around the £2,000 mark. So I've got um, one from the local person, 2600 Howden's 2200 Magnet 2500 Now, I did then go drill into the quality um, of the doors and the carcasses, etc., that would be supplied. Finding out things like Howden's, their doors are 16 millimeters foil wrapped. Uh, magnets are 18.5 millimeters, which are laminated doors. Uh, the local lady had matte pet foil and lacquered, which is a much higher quality door. And then DIY Kitchens came in at 90 millimeters acrylic doors. So after weighing them all up, the only two really that I left in the running was the local lady and also DIY Kitchens. They were the two highest quality for, my, for me really. And what I'm looking for on this project is something that's really simple, basic, but really strong and durable that's going to last for a long time. Um, in the end, because actually a flash sale has just come up with DIY Kitchens, I've actually gone with them. I've ended up paying about 1,800 quid. Um, I've ordered it today and it's due to arrive in three weeks. I've had my plasterer actually come in for the last couple of days. I believe that he's been in and done the kitchen and the lounge as well. And also my plumber's been in and put a bath in. So I'm just popping over now just to have a quick look, check the work, see what's going on, but also to pick up my tools as well because I've just had another property come through and land on my lap today. So I'm actually gonna be down tools, tooling in this property um, and moving over to the next one and just letting my plasterer crack on with doing the stairs and upstairs and getting it all skimmed out for me and getting my plumber to sort out the bathroom and then hopefully when I turn this other one around it should be ready for me to come back in um, and crack on with it so let's go in and have a look okie dokie so wow that is looking so different isn't it my gosh it looks so so much better once you've got the uh, the plaster or the skim on the walls on comparison to what it did look like it's, look, it's looking like a a real property now and this kitchen as well looking fantastic looking really good and then let's see what we've done in the bathroom here so we've got a bath in now which is great and then we're just going to box that end in there so today's the 23rd of june and i'm actually just on my way back over from manchester where i've spent the day on a damp and timber treatment training course which has been absolutely fantastic i'm really impressed with the content and my knowledge now on damp um, throughout a property and timber treatment um, is far greater than it was before which is only going to save me money when renovating these properties anyway throughout the day i've had photos progress photos coming through uh, being sent over by my uh, plumber who's sending me photos of the bathroom where now the floor been tiled the walls have been tiled um, and we're actually ready to start rebuilding and putting the suite into the bathroom which is really exciting and it's great that it's getting done while I'm not at the property so a bit of exciting news today we're on the 7th of July and I've just got confirmation that the bathroom has actually just been finished uh, so I've got some photos through looks really really good tiles are down all the bath suites in um, all the tiles are up on the walls splash back etc everything's been boxed in um, and it's looking really really good from the photos anyway I haven't seen it in person um, I've just got the receipt through or the invoice through and it's cost me £3,732.16 for the entire bathroom. So not too bad and I'm looking forward to seeing it. 
If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure, and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over two million pounds. Simply go to the description below, click on the link, and I'll send you out a free copy. So I think I told you that I went with DIY kitchens for my kitchen. And what they do when you order this kitchen online, um, the website's really intuitive actually, like it brings it all in, it shows you the pictures, you can actually design it on the site. I was actually very impressed with the website. Um, but when you go for delivery, you select the week that you would like it to be delivered and they confirm that first of all, but then you don't hear anything at all until the week that it's actually going to be delivered they then just send you a text message and an email saying that it's going to be delivered in the next two days between eight o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night. And then the next time you hear from them is two hours before it's gonna be delivered, which is really ridiculous. It basically means that for two days until this kitchen's delivered, you've got to sit waiting on call for the guys to call you. It then can't be, you can't go more than six steps. So the guys won't go more than six steps high and it can't be more than 20 meters away from their van else they won't deliver. Um, and if, if I know this from experience from a friend that's had one delivered, if it happens to be a Sunday at 10 o'clock at night and you phone and say it's not convenient, then they say that they're either gonna they'll take it away or they'll drop it and leave it there and then. And then you obviously have to pay for a, it to be re-delivered if, if they have to go away. So. Great service, great website, but the delivery is just really, really inconvenient. So I'm now just on to cutting, preparing, and fixing the skirting boards and architrave. The tool that I'm actually using for the job is this Evolution chop saw, and it is absolutely brilliant. The precision cuts are unreal, actually. I got onto this brand by my friend, he's one of the local reps, and he told me that I would definitely need one of these if I'm starting on the skirting of the architrave in this renovation project. It's a chop saw, like I say, it's got a really good reach on it and you can do all of the angles as well. So it's absolutely fantastic, I would highly recommend it. If you don't have any tools from Evolution, head over to their website and have a bit of a look. I think it would definitely benefit you to have a look at these before you start any projects or if you're already into one as well. Because of my friend, I've actually got a discount code as well that I can pass on to you guys. So if you go to the description, there's a link to go over to their website and then I've got a code that will get you 5% off any or any evolution tool. So that's just a little gift from me to you. And like I say, I've been using it for cutting up the piping to go through for the extractor fans. I've been cutting up the skirting boards. I've been doing the architrave. I've been doing the curtain poles today. And anything you put through this thing, it just seamlessly gets through and makes a really good job and a neat cut of it as well. Okay, so we're looking pretty good in the back bedroom now. You can see that I've got one coat of gloss on the skirting board. I've now just told my plumber to come in and start hanging radiators. Managed to get the curtain pole up, got the lampshade up ready, and this room is looking really good. Um, that's a recycled door actually from my own property when I renovated it. So I just need to gloss, well, rub it down, fill it, and then gloss it up. But this back bedroom is now looking really good. The, so this is the front bedroom, and I've just put the vent there on the chimney breast. So I just marked it uh, before I then, I plasterboarded over it and skimmed it, just so that air can circulate through the top of the chimney. So I haven't blocked up the top of the chimney. If you remember, I've left a gap in the top. I've got a gap at the bottom, and I'm just gonna put these air vents, one here in the bedroom, and then down below in the lounge as well, just to keep that air circulating, so you don't get any trapped air, which will then create some damp issues. I've just been up in the loft this morning to top up the insulation. And you can see that where I've stood up on the rafters in the loft, I've now got some cracks in the ceiling. Now this is quite typical. If you need to do any work in the loft, it's worth doing before you finish the property off rather than doing it last. This will be fine when I just give it a bit of a paint over um, and the paint will just seal that crack nicely. So it won't be an issue at all. So today I'm just looking at which soft furnishings actually to put in the rooms. I get all of my lampshades and curtains from the local charity shops. I just asked the ladies and the guys in there just to save them for me if there's any curtains with eye holes in them. So the ringlet curtains, any curtain poles, any theater, bathroom mirrors, etc., um, And also the lampshades as well. Uh, it just makes it nice and cheap. I get good, decent quality stuff and it just makes it a little bit nicer for when the tenants actually move into these properties. So I'm just going around today, measuring up and getting the right curtains to match the right lampshades. 
So I've just put the hole in now for the extractor fan into the kitchen. I always do it from the, I drill a guide hole through and then drill it from the outside because you can see that it makes quite a mess. So the last thing I want is that inside the property. Um, I just use this big hefty drill here um, and then the core drill end on the end of it there. So we're now on the 6th of October. Yesterday my gas engineer was in the property. He's fitted all of the radiators for me and fitted the boiler in the kitchen as well. So I'm just popping over to have a look now, but it just means that I can start cracking on now and fitting the kitchen. So radiators are now on and looking really good as well. You can see the one in the kitchen we've got just here and then just coming into the two bedrooms we've got one here and we've got one just here as well so looking really good. However the boiler has gone in and I have got no idea what I'm going to do with all of this monstrosity here trying to hide that behind the kitchen unit. So I've got it down on the floor, which wouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. I can move the legs on the units, but trying to hide all of that in the corner um, is gonna be an absolute job and a half. So yeah, you might have to wish me luck on that one. I actually had all of that mess, that monstrosity moved down. And what I've actually done is just moved the back of this cupboard forward. So you might be able to just see all those units are just behind there. Um, and it sits just behind this, this wall here now in the cupboard. So it's a false wall as well. So actually it can just be unscrewed and taken out if ever we do need to get to them. And then my idea is that I'm just gonna box in these pipes up here and then I'll be able to tile all the way along. And it just makes it a hell of a lot neater. So I've got most of the kitchen in there now as well that you can see and I've just been doing a little bit of work in the bathroom today um, and what I've actually done is just put up this mirror. I always like to put up a really good decent um, large mirror in a bathroom. It is actually also from one of the charity shops so the reason why I would actually put these up is because if I don't then the tenants will. So I just want to make sure that obviously there's a nice decent mirror there that's solid and secure to the wall and it won't be falling off. Then a towel holder if I wouldn't put one on the wall the reason why I don't put it in the door is just because some of these doors are hollow as well so obviously with a bit of weight on it then it will fall out so that thing will stay there forever and then I've also just put a blind up there as well tenants do like um, the privacy within the bathroom so if you don't put a blind up then the tenants probably will so you're better off doing it yourself and making sure that it is secure but this bathroom now is pretty much ready to go I've also changed that drain cover today as well the old one was rotten and if somebody would have put their foot on it they probably would have gone through it so just for safety reasons um, I actually just angle grinded around the concrete there made a decent sized hole for fit in the new manhole cover and that's gone in looks pretty good so i've just had the worktops fitted and they look pretty damn good actually so now i'm just going to start working on boxing in these pipes putting a small box across here and all the way up to the top and then i'm going to have it tiled straight across um, and then i'll be able to get those top units in and the extractor fan so now we are getting somewhere that's the kitchen in tiles have just started going up today so i've got tyler in doing that I'm just putting this extractor fan up now, but we are looking good and the kitchen is the last room to do. So really cracking on. The main reason why I went for a white and gray design here in the kitchen is just because I believe that it'll always stay in fashion. So hopefully this kitchen now will last about 10 years or so. You'll notice there's no patterns anywhere. Yes, we've got a gray floor and we've got a gray worktop here, but everything else is just gonna be white and gray. So hopefully this color will stay in fashion and it will look good for the foreseeable future. So there we go, kitchen finished. I just need to seal around the worktop and the hob there. And then other than that, it's good to go. So we're on the 13th of November and I am really nearly now ready to clear out of this property. I've got the carpets coming in and down on Wednesday. So I'll give you a quick tour around just to let you know what I've done. I've got the curtains up here in the front bedroom. These have come from the charity shop, cost me very little, and that goes for the lampshade as well. You'll notice that I put the vent here in the chimney breast just to keep that air flowing within this bedroom. And then obviously everywhere has been decorated. We've had it rewired as well. Um, and this property actually sits directly opposite the train station. So so this property is going to be really sought after by tenants. Brand spanking new radiator has gone into all of the rooms as well. If we just have a quick look into the back bedroom, it's pretty much the same. So we've got the curtains from the charity shop, lampshade from the charity shop, new radiators in there. You can see the plug sockets and the light switches are all new. Now all of these doors throughout the property and the handles have actually come from my property, my residential property, when I refurbished it. So I've refurbed these doors, sanded them all down, painted them, got them to fit, and put them, actually fitted them into this property. So we've got a lampshade here in the hall. And then as we come down, down the hall just steps just here you can see that the handrails now gone back on so I took that off 
sanded it all down, painted it up, which then leads us and brings us into the kitchen. Now, this kitchen floor I actually had tiled. It cost me a little bit more, obviously, but it's gonna last a lot longer than if I would have put a vinyl floor down. So here in the kitchen, this kitchen actually came from DIYkitchens.com. It's really solid, really well built. Um, the carcasses came built already. The doors actually come on them as well. So it's really nice and easy to fit. This actual hob came from my property when I um, did my residential refurbishment. So that's been secondhand and refurbed as well. It's got a new oven, obviously a new extractor fan, new boiler as well. And then I've got a constant trickle fan up here in the kitchen. These things only cost £1.12 a year to run and it is constantly on, which means that any moisture within this room, and with the kitchen being one of the rooms that generates the most moisture, it's most likely to get some damp issues in here and some condensation but that constant trickle fan. Tenants don't know it's on. You can obviously see here that you can't see the fan at all and it's super quiet. So they'll not know that it's actually on and sucking out the moisture from this kitchen. Down here in the fireplace, you can see that I've got a vent just to keep that air circulating, new radiator and the refurbished doors as well. That brings us then over into the back passageway. So you can see that we've got a new UPVC door that went on there. Got lampshade up here, which has come from the charity shop, which takes us then into the bathroom, which has been completely refurbished. I've got a bath in there with a shower over, and the reason why I would put a curtain and a curtain pole up there as well, instead of a screen, is just because they're really quick, simple, easy, and cheap to make <coughs> to change if, on a tenant turnover, then it gets a bit grubby. Whereas if you've got one of those screens, they do tend to get really grubby, and they're quite expensive to change over. Big, nice mirror here that I've put up, because if I wouldn't have done the tenants would, so it's safer if I actually put them in the properties. That's come from a charity shop, shop cost me about five quid. And then I've got this towel hook up here, which I put into the wall, nice and secure, just because I don't really want the tenants putting anything in the doors, just because it might fall off in the future. So again, in the bathroom, I've got a constant trickle fan. Now this one actually comes on with the light as well. So the tenants will think that it only comes on when the light's turned on, but actually in the background, it's constantly trickling and sucking that moisture out of this room. I then got a blind on the window just for that privacy reasons. And again, that came actually from the charity shop. And then you can see here that there's just a towel rail behind the bath. The reason why I would have a bath and a shower is because it's the perfect combination and it'll attract all tenant pools. Then moving on through, you can see that the cellar door is just here. I've been doing some cleaning out in the cellar. I haven't really done a great deal, just aired it like with those air bricks to make sure that the air is passing through just to keep the damp away. And then as we come into the lounge, we've got a new PVC door, we've got the window and the netting up there just for a bit of privacy. And then of course, we've got the uh, vent down here in the chimney breast as well. So the property's looking absolutely fantastic, nearly ready to go. I've got the Carpet's going down now on Wednesday. I've just got to do a bit of a clear out and a clean out and then we're good to go. Today's the 17th of November and it should be carpet day today. However, I had a call first thing this morning from my carpet fitter and the carpets haven't been delivered. So he's gonna do them tomorrow. I've then got the professional photographer going in on Monday. And what I've been doing today is drawing up a right move or a property portal advert to give to my agent. Now, the reason why I would do this myself rather than let the agent do it is because I wanna make sure that it's done properly. I'm gonna be using this advert long into the future. So it's important for me to get all of that information on there to get some fantastic photos and to give every little intricate detail about the property such as where the radiators are the new windows upvc doors etc what the flooring type is the room sizes just because a really good information filled advert is far more attractive to potential tenants and if things are missing it's quite easily to tinderify and just actually flick to the next property so i want to make sure that my property advert is sticky for people to go in and get all of the information that they need to then obviously book a viewing so I can attract more tenants. So here we are on the 18th of November and it is carpet day finally. So I've got some really nice gunmetal grey carpets down in both of the bedrooms and down the hallway here as well. And then of course in the small passageway and into the lounge. So I've just got to get these hoovered up, get all the dust out of the property and then get it live on right move. So I've just got off the phone to show my mortgage advisor and we've had a good chat about how I'm actually going to purchase this property. It seems now we've got a little bit of trouble in the fact that who I'm trying to buy it from is actually my stepdad's brother. So it isn't classed as immediate family. So there is one lender out there at the moment that will do this fancy mortgaging or lending for us where I actually purchase the property at the agreed asking price or sale price of £70,000. But then they will actually give me the funds on the price that it is actually worth now after I've renovated it, which I'm estimating is about £140,000. 
Like I say, there's only one lender that will do it because it's my stepdad's brother, so not immediate family, but they're wanting 6.89% as an interest rate on the mortgage. So what I'm actually gonna do now is go back to my mum and stepdad and see if they can actually lend me the money to purchase this property. I'm then gonna own it for six months and then in six months time, it will open up all of the options for me. So then I can just put a random standard buy to let mortgage on it and actually finance the property at the current value. The reason why I'll wait for six months is because if I do it before that, the lenders just class it as a same day mortgage and they will only actually value it usually at the price that I'm gonna pay for it, which would be 70,000 pound. And I actually wanna take all of that money back out, one, to be able to pay back my parents, but also because I've now put this money into the property for the renovations, which I think totals up to about 20,000 pound but I'll certainly be adding all of that up for you to let you know exactly how much it cost me. So now it's sweet talking my parents to see if I can actually get this money to purchase it in cash and then I'll sit on it and wait for six months before then putting a mortgage on the property. So we're on the 1st of December and I'm just heading over to the solicitors now to actually sign for this property. It is still going to go through as a cash sale, which is a bit disappointing because I was hoping that I'd be able to get it on a mortgage and actually get those funds out straight away. But it looks like I'm going to have to wait. So I'm going in today just to sign up the paperwork, get it all signed and sealed, etc. And then I'll get myself a completion date, which will be in the near future. I've just had an email from my agent. It's the first week of advertising the property and we've already got people that are interested. So the email says, I've got a lovely professional couple that would really like to move into the property. Both have got good jobs um, and have landlord references they can move in on the 16th of December so today is actually the second so that's just two weeks or so um, their names are and I've got their names one's a social media manager um, which is the company I've got the company here and I've got the salary which is 30,000 a year um, then the lady is a marketing executive for a beauty company and she's on 22,000 a year um, I'm really happy with these two. We've been showing them around lots of properties, but yours being the highest standard. Um, this is just exactly what they've been looking for. So they're really excited. Can I proceed with this um, tenancy agreement? They've sent me all the necessary documents of ID, et cetera, and we're good to go. I've gone back and said to my agent, no, because I want somebody, either them or me, and I'd prefer it to be me, to actually speak to these tenants employers who they're currently working for and also the previous landlord as well now it is actually an agent that they were managed by in their previous property um, so I've just said to my agent that it's too risky for me relying on a referencing company to tell us that they have done these checks because it cost me £10,000 last time we trusted one of these referencing agencies so I've asked now my agent to send me over who it is they've put down as a reference from their places of work and to give me the number of their previous landlord and I'm going to give them a call just just double check it just double check have a chat with the people that they've the references that they've put down um, and ensure that I'm actually happy um, to proceed with this tenancy before I give the green light now of course it's great that they can move in on the 16th which is in just two weeks time however the last thing you want to do is pick the wrong tenant and get the wrong person in the property because it can cause an absolute nightmare and it took me a year to get the last non-paying tenants out. So for me, even missing a few days of them not actually moving in and missing that rent just for a few days or so means absolutely nothing on comparison to ensuring and doing my due diligence myself and just double checking the background of these tenants first. I've just done a little bit of my own due diligence on these tenants. I've actually just called up um, the gentleman who's looking to move in. I've called the CEO of his company. I was provided these details by my letting agent um, through the tenants, providing them obviously over to the tenancy, um, to the referencing agent. But I just want to speak to a person um, because I know how easy it is, you know, to put anybody's name, anybody's number and email address and have it sent over to a friend who then fills it in and says everything's hunky dory. So I've actually just phoned both employers and I've also phoned the property manager um, um, who used to who managed the property that they've just lived in who said she's done a couple of inspections during their tenancy there's been no smoking indoors the place was kept really lovely and tidy they're really sad to leave them they've been cracking tenants and they've always paid on time so three phone calls to three individuals that I've just had a chat with about these people that have got um, a bit of experience and, and they know them and can give them a reference and um, yeah all went well so I'm now happy to proceed and I've given my agent the green light to uh, get these tenants moved in as quick as possible so today's the 6th of December I've just had a call from my solicitor who has told me that the property has just completed so it's now gone through and it's in my limited company name so I now own property number 19. So we're on Saturday the 17th of December 2022 and the tenants actually moved into the property yesterday. The move-in went really smooth and they're really happy in the place. They're going to be paying me £675 per calendar month and as it stands at the moment I don't have a mortgage on the property. 
So that concludes video number two in this three-part series. If you've not yet been back and watched video number one where I come across the property, do the initial rip out and then start the renovations, make sure you go back and watch that one now. And then of course, look out for video number three where we'll delve into the detail and crunch the numbers. If you have got any value from this video at all, please do give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, if you wanted to pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, make sure you go to the description and click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.